Ukraine is second largest uh, producer and exporter of grains. So um, it is impossible to substitute it with anybody within half a year or a year. Uh, we're talking about uh, 50 million tons of grains uh, per year that is supposed to be exported. And what we have now is about 25, 22 to 25 million tons of grain that is stuck in Ukraine that cannot be exported. Ukraine is second largest uh, producer and exporter of grains. So um, it is impossible to substitute it with anybody within half a year or a year. Uh, we're talking about uh, 50 million tons of grains uh, per year that is supposed to be exported. And what we have now is about 25, 22 to 25 million tons of grain that is stuck in Ukraine that cannot be exported due to the fact that Ukraine is built in a way where most of the exports is done by sea. And now, uh, you know, the Black Sea is, is, is blocked by the Russian Navy. Uh, well, I was going to ask, are any ships moving at all out of Pivdienyi? No, no ships are moving in uh, from the Ukrainian coast at all. Uh, but the funny fact is that Russian ports on the Black Sea are still operational. And mm. the millions and millions of tons of oil that are being exported out of Russia are going out of the port uh, Novorossiysk on the Black Sea and then passing through Bosphorus um, and, and being bought all over the world by different customers. Uh, are the ports blocked because, because of the fear of what the Russian Navy might do in the Black Sea to any ships that leave Ukrainian ports? Or are they blocked because of fear of hitting mines laid by either side? Uh, for two reasons, really. Uh, Russians have shown that they can attack merchant vessels and have done it on the day two or day three of the war. Um, so obviously, merchant vessels are not Navy vessels. You cannot command them to, say, to sail the a lot of uh, you know, a lot of parties are involved, like insurance companies, shipping agencies, crewing agencies, etc. <clears throat> so before there will be some level of guarantees for uh, for the for the merchant uh, vessels, they will not be able to sail and and deliver grains to actually more than half a billion people around the world are are mm. um, receiving and and eating um, Ukrainian grain. Uh, you said there's about. 25 million tons of wheat and other grains in storage already what happens later in the summer when you get the new harvest what what you can't there won't be any place to store it at all will there will it just be thrown away this will be a disaster dominic because exactly there will be no place to store <clears throat> the old year's harvest will be will start rotting because most of the ukrainian storage is not meant for uh long-term uh, storage and we're talking about 25 million tons of last year's crop and approximately 30 million tons of New Year's crop, which is already kicking in. Um, it's it's going to turn into a very bad situation. Is there any prospect of moving it by rail? Yeah, we've done our math. And uh, by rail, we could only do one and a half million tons per month, uh, whereas we need 10 million tons per month in order to to move out the, the grain that is stuck in the country from last year's crop and from new year's crop <clears throat> so that's only 15 percent it's not going to do the trick and there is no way to expand it in a sufficient manner so the only really the only way is to unblock the ports uh, hopefully with the with the help of uh, united nations and, and turkey and possibly other parties involved like egypt for example because egypt mm. relies uh, on ukrainian grain up to 45 percent and for them, it's going to turn into a, a real, real problem. Is there any way you think that that the access to the ports could be negotiated separately from from the war in Ukraine? Aren't the two things inextricably linked? There's no chance of there being a settlement or an agreement on ports without a, without a wider agreement. Well, it's a great question. Um, um, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, Russia only understands power. So in case the, the Western world will start hunting their oil exports, I would assume a separate agreement can be reached. But then this would have to be done with the help of UN. We see that UN is relatively um, efficient with the Azov uh, hostage situation, uh, where they've been able to resolve it and to assist. <clears throat> Hopefully they can do the same here. And I, I heard of some... Uh, talks ha happening between um, uh, UN, Turkey, and Russia. Um, as far as I know, Ukraine is not involved in these talks. 
but uh, I hope they do their job and uh, they will de-block the ports. It's not only it's not only grains, uh, Dominic. We're also talking about um, tens of million tons of uh, iron ore, of steel, of containers. You know, if we if we if we want to launch the economy, as as President Zelensky said, and we have to do it. Um, we have to get other cargoes moving as well, like especially containers, because containers are delivering, uh, you know, raw materials and, and end products for the SMEs in Ukraine, small and medium enterprises. Um, we, we cannot we cannot just sit and wait for help from the Western world. We have to get you know the economy up and running. And Ukrainian farmers have been actually very um, very good example of of how you can do your job during bombings. Um, I've seen pictures and videos of, you know, uh, fields uh, being shelled and bombed during seeding or during harvesting. It's incredible.